Um, so welcome, I'm Fiona McDonald, and I provide um, support around EOTC systems, um, and I'm on the end of the email or phone for uh, questions around EOTC systems um, on behalf of EONS. Uh, so some of you may have been online for the EOTC and outdoor education at alert level uh, two, um, which was a lot more comprehensive and uh, difficult to manage than level one. Um, but I have had a number of questions um, since we've gone to level one. Um, so I just thought this is an opportunity to answer all of those and to see if there's any other questions floating out there as well. Um, Catherine will record this and so um, if there's people at school that um, you think would benefit afterwards, um, you can feel free to pop onto the Eon, EON's website and um, share that with them. The level two advice um, is also sitting in there um, recorded from last time. Uh, as Catherine said, um, there's not that many of us today, so um, we'll whip through this presentation and then um, And then um, we can have uh, any questions either in the chat or probably you can just ask them, um, seeing there's not that many of us. Um, if you stay on mute um, during the session, uh, but you can have your cameras on if you like or not. Um, uh, so one thing before we go into the presentation is just a quick check um, to make sure your school is on the National, Incident, uh, National EOTC Coordinator Database and you're looking for this little um, symbol on the front of EONS's web page, uh, homepage, and clicking on that, it takes you through to um, a free registration, very quick process, and then you're getting all of this information coming to your inbox. If you can share that around your networks, um, with your neighboring schools, um, anyone you talk to in different schools, that'd be really appreciated. Uh, where around about a thousand schools have EOTC coordinators or their APDPs registered on that database. Um, so obviously there's still a few to um, get onto that database. And um, it's really a great way to make sure you're keeping up with um, current good practice. So now into uh, level one. Um, and the key change here is that there's no public health requirements that are specified for you at level one. Um, they, instead of being requirements, they become key public health measures for schools. And uh, these will be the things that you have been doing all the way along and um, we should all be continuing to do. Um, you know, if they, you stay home if you're sick, you have really good hand hygiene and sneeze cough hygiene. Uh, there is still a program of regularly disinfecting surfaces, but uh, that's not as rigid as it was at level two. Um, and you know, lots of ability for students um, and your teachers to be able to uh, wash, dry, de disinfect their hands. Um, the contract tracing moves from having to do it to supporting that and that seems to be a little bit of a moving feast at the moment around what contact tracing um, looks like. Um, and obviously, as soon as you've got anyone who might be displaying any sort of symptoms, um, that's getting them home and uh, getting um, testing organised for them and being really careful about following the Ministry of Health um, advice for that. Um, so what to look like, um, I look for. Uh, so those that are done well, staying at home. Um, the key things here for EOTC is just having that check before you put the students on the mini um, bus or the bus and, or you leave school and, and having a little plan if all of a sudden someone presents with some symptoms um, so that you can leave that student at home and school is able to organise um, getting them home um, to a caregiver or a parent. And then having a plan in, um, in your management system for what to do if someone reports as unwell during the event. And that's probably already in your plans. And even regardless of COVID, if it isn't, it should be. Um, you've suddenly got someone um, 
vomiting, picked up food poisoning, all those sorts of things. So it's having that plan, if someone is suddenly sick, um, what are you gonna do with them during the event? And that feeds in to helping you organize your supervision structure for an event as well. Uh, making sure you have got enough transportation or you've thought about how you would get a student um, home or thought about whether parents could come and pick um, someone up if they were unwell from your event. Good hygiene, I'm sure we're all on top of this um, now. Uh, when you're going out for EOTC, it's just the same as if you were at school, um, making sure um, kids or students know about where sneezing into their elbows, making sure you've got facilities for them to wash and dry their hands. Um, if you're going down to the playground or the local park and you don't have those hand washing facilities, thinking about whether it's taking hand sanitizer or wipes, um, particularly if they're going to eat down there, so they have their ability to um, sanitize hands before eating and after playing on equipment. And then just this regular cleaning of um, surfaces or shared equipment and just having a process in place for that. Um, supporting the contact tracing, this is something that you'll be doing in, for EOTC anyway. Um, so it, it kind of comes back now to what you would have been doing anyway. So recording who's on the trip, where you're going, um, who you're talking to, or who's working with your group when you're out and about, um, and keeping good records of your parents and volunteers that might be helping you. So making sure you know who's gone with you and you've got contact details um, if you need to get in touch with them. Um, there's a, um, some ability to be a role model and um, educate about using the contact um, tracing app as well. Transport. Uh, again, it's just around record keeping that you should be doing anyway. Um, what students go in what vehicle um, and keeping a record of that and then uh, the same as if you're going out down to the local park um, consider whether having sanitizer available so um, students are um, sanitizing hands when they get in and out of um, vehicles and then that um, can mean that you're not having to uh, sanitize the vehicle itself which is a a change from level two. Uh, working with external providers. Now, um, next month's webinar is all on working with external providers. So I won't go into a lot of detail here because uh, the next one of these webinars will. Um, but when you're thinking um, COVID and level one, it's really about ensuring that um, you have a good understanding about what uh, practices and systems they've got in place uh, and that they um, meet your requirements so um, you know who's going to be there, uh, you, you know they've got good hygiene practices in place around both um, hand hygiene and bathrooms but also around um, food hygiene, um, you know how sleeping arrangements work, um, cleaning etc and that there's systems in place if someone gets unwell. Uh, using Form 6 out of the EOTC toolkit um, can really help you if you just work through that as a conversation um, starter with your provider and recording your discussions. And by doing that, you're meeting your um, requirements under the health and safety legislation to consult, coordinate and cooperate with those providers. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is just a couple of screenshots from um, the EON's website uh, to show you where things are. Um, this one's to show you, this is our homepage, and there's that big national EOTC database, uh, coordinated database button. Um, if you know anyone that needs uh, to register their EOTC coordinator, um, that will take you directly through to the page that you can do it. Uh, and then there's all sorts of other interesting things on there for you to uh, look at. Um, 
but this EOTC management page, uh, which is off the top bar, um, is where you can find um, the EOTC management Zoom series if you go, want to go back into that, and the frequently asked questions. Also has links to the good practice guides which support um, your work in schools. And there's also a COVID related page uh, that um, sits under resources and publications. And that's where this recording will be on the bottom of this page, but also lots of other stuff um, and links and ideas are in there. And all the links to the current ministry support documents um, around um, health and safety and all the COVID bulletins are all sitting in there as well. So now's the time for any questions. Um, feel free to turn your mics on um, or pop anything into a chat. Otherwise, it's going to be a very super quick session. <laughs> so you better ask some questions. Right, if no one's got any questions, I'll ask you one. Um, how, how's EOTC going with in your schools? Um, and are you starting to get back on track with what you had planned for the year? Hello. Okay. Ruth, do you want to share? Um, just saying, so we go across multiple different schools. So I am in deaf education in New Zealand. And so one thing that we found hard to begin with was letting schools have their students come to us knowing that there could be 50 different schools represented at an event. So it's just getting to the place now where schools are happy to send their kids on events again, where they know it will be multiple kids from different schools interacting. Fantastic. And have you had conversations with those schools um, to put their minds at ease do that? Um, yes, with some. Others have just been more of the journey of kind of realising that kids hang out with different schools in the weekend anyway, so as safe as they can keep during school hours, out of school hours, they've got no control over. Um, and just reassuring that we're going to be following all the processes that they follow at school as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Ruth. Donald? If you have... I was just going to say that it's it's um, it's it's kind of been a slow across our schools. It's been slow coming out of lockdown. <clears throat> so everyone kind of felt their way about um, reconnected with the school, um, but now people are playing catch up, and there's lots of trips going out. How's everyone finding? Um when you're working with providers, getting bookings, et cetera. Hi, Kelly here. Um, I'm Thank finding you. that they are uh, wanting definite numbers very early on, um, whereas with Duke of Ed, we, we are moving around with our numbers all the time. And um, so I've struggled with getting that, uh, getting that balance between having a, a bit of room for negotiation and them wanting numbers so that they can get other groups in at the same time. Mm. Yeah, there certainly seems to be some pressure out there, doesn't there? Oh, yeah. I have a question for the group, um, and that's around, uh, it's not that I'm pessimistic, but uh, is there any thinking already or going on um, within schools as to what um, a move back into level two would look like? And uh, is, there, is that really very much driven by, well, if it comes our way, we'll deal with it? Or, you know, I'm just interested in that because I haven't heard, I haven't heard from, from schools particularly around their readiness or, or preparedness for it potentially 
moving into a zone that is in level two, for example. No one's volunteering anything on that, Catherine, because we're not going there. No. <laughs> That would be that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And that would be that would just that would be amazing yeah. if we didn't. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, so we've got some comments on chat. Yep, crazy times. Um, back up and running. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I'm hearing from lots of schools that it's um, really busy um, at senior levels, trying to get enough um, practical days in to do assessment. I was going to say the other the other kind of thing that's putting pressure on is the closing of the Hanur and Waitakere's for Auckland schools or for for the Auckland region and just the kind of that plus the COVID where you lost a couple of months where people couldn't go on programs just making venue availability and campsite availability pretty crazy. Anything else? Any burning questions? On any topic? <laughs> Before we close this, um, you can see on the last slide, um, that email address is, is my email or comes directly to me. So any questions about EOTC, um, your systems that you're operating, um, curly questions from parents, um, I had a curly one about tetanus, um, vaccinations the other day. So all of those sorts of things where you, you just want a um, second opinion or uh, to try out what you think the answer might be, or you've got no idea what the answer is, um, I'm really happy for you to email um, those to me. The one thing uh, I was just gonna add is that there's still lots of conversations around the 150, the oh. 150 charge. Yep. Um, <laughs> I've given them the stuff that's been on the EONS website and the, the one pager that was from TKI. Um, can your email address be an email that responds to those sort of questions or is that? Sure. Yep. Cool. Yep. Thank I'm you. And I have had a few schools um, looking for, or a few outdoor ed teachers looking for um, support around, um, or in camp organisers actually. Um, for support around how they might um, work through that space. Cool. So, so just to clarify, this is the donation scheme. Yeah, donation. so yeah, the $150 per student. Yeah. Yep, so happy to clarify or, or help with support in that area. Thank you. Ooh. All right. Um, if there's no, no other questions, um, we'll sign off. And um, I just encourage you to um, pop along next month to the um, webinar on working with external providers. And we'll really look at um, Form 6 and um, requirements under legislation for working with a, another um, organisation, um, both coming into your school and you going out to them. So spread the word. Yeah, perhaps I can, I can just say that, so there'll be an EA, um, a, a network update that will go out with a link. A link will also, be, or a, a registration link will also be put on, uh, on that page under EOTC management where it had uh, the Zoom series information and it will probably go out on Facebook as well. Okay. okay. Thanks for making the time, everyone. Um, I hope that was useful. Okay. Yeah. Until the next time. Yep. Okay, everyone. Okay, day.